It is a privilege and a blessing and an honor to be before you this this day, fourth Sunday, May 23rd, 2021, in the presence of the saints. Today, I want to move right into the message. It is a message that has been on my heart, and I did not understand how to articulate it or how to bring it forth. So I thank God for the Holy Ghost and thank him for his word and and his power. We have been talking about the kingdom of God, and we have been talking about how important it is to live in the kingdom of God and what it means to be in the kingdom of God. And, And today I want to talk to you about religion versus relationship. There are many Christians who have religion, but very few Christians who have a relationship which causes me to ask the question, do you really know Christ? They have a religion, but they don't have a relationship, so I'm trying to figure out, are you really saved? question is, uh, have you been born again? Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? The Bible starts off in uh, Psalms, 23rd Psalm says, the Lord is my shepherd. So the question is, is the shepherd your Lord? And so we want to talk about religion versus relationship. Now, it's my intent to preach, I mean, to teach this, but y'all already know what might happen. There's a question I need to ask you. Are you a religious person or a relational person? Are you a religious person or are you a relational person? It is important to understand that because the kingdom of God is not a religion, the priority of mankind should not be to seek a religion or some form of ritual, but to seek the kingdom. God is interested in relationship, not religion. I hate to bring some bad news to some folks. He's not interested in your doctrine. He's not interested in your rules and regulations, your do's and your don'ts, what we do over here, what we believe in. he's, He's not interested in any of that. He's only interested in relationship with him through Jesus Christ. You must understand, we, 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 we must understand that Jesus came to reestablish relationship, not to establish a religion. That was the problem with the Sadducees and the Pharisees and, and the religious leaders of that day. They, they were trying to keep Jesus in a box. They were trying to keep him under the law. They were trying to keep him in line with the law. And Jesus told them, look, I came to fulfill the law. Uh, Jesus could have told them, I am the law. The law came from me in the first place uh, with y'all smart self. Y'all don't understand. I was in the beginning. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word. I said I wasn't going to preach. I'm, I, 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 And so you must understand, I came to reestablish what sin messed up. I came to reestablish what man messed up. I came to reestablish the truth. And the truth of the fact of the matter is, it's not about religion. It's about relationship. And you can always tell people, you can always tell when folks don't have a relationship. This is why we need to first repent. We need to repent. Christians need to repent everywhere, meaning that we need to change the way we think and change the way we're doing things. I didn't say you need to go on the altar or fall on your knees and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins and 
and drip with tears and go back and still do the same thing. I mean, that's, that's not what repentance is all about. Repentance is about turning. It's about turning. It's about turning. It's turning from the direction that which you are going and turning into the direction in which God is trying to lead you, trying to direct you. We have, over these years, I've been in church for 40-some years. So if you want to know if I know what I'm talking about, I've been in church for 40-something years. Actually, all you have to do is subtract five years from my previous birthday, and you'll be looking at about 50, you'll be looking at about 50, 52 years I've been in church. And, and most of those early years, I was not in relationship. I was in religion. Steeped in religion. Denominational rhetoric, doctrine, dogma. Steeped in religion. And you have people right now, they're so in tune and so connected to religion and they've been there so long until when you start talking about relationship, they start thinking you're preaching another gospel. You start talking about relationship, they think you've gone off your rockers. They think you're talking about another God. They think you've taken it too far. They feel like it's impossible. They don't believe. And, and, and that's because uh, they're still dead. They, 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 they are still dead. They, 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 are, they, are, they are thinking dead. They are practicing death. They, they have been taught, some of the leaders in these uh, different denominations, they have been taught from cemeteries. Oh, I'm sorry, seminaries. They've been taught in seminaries, but the seminaries were cemeteries, and so they end up teaching, learning dead stuff, and now that's all they know. They teach, they practice, and they live dead stuff. And I want you to understand something. It's been my experience. I don't know what your experience has been, but it's been my experience that religion is dead, but relationship is much alive. One thing, one thing, one thing we have to understand that we've been programmed by religion. And now in order to operate successfully in the kingdom of God, it requires change. You need to be able to change. You got a lot of folks that think they're saved. They're not saved. They're religious, but they're not saved. They're religious, but they haven't asked Jesus Christ to come into their life. And some of them asked Jesus Christ to come into their life, but they had no intentions of living right. So the theatrically, they just went over a statement. And moved on. So when anybody asked them if they're saved, yeah, 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 I, I went over to sinner's prayer. Yeah, that, and they don't know anything about Romans 10, 9, and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved with the heart, man, believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. They don't know none of that. They don't believe none of that. And, and don't even talk to them about that. They can't even find it in the Bible. Yet they're saved. And so we must understand that one thing that makes it so hard is that Satan tries to make us feel like traitors for going against all the religious training we've had. See, I can go in some denominations right now and I can teach and preach this and they look at me like I'm out of place and out of order. And the only thing I would tell them is you need to read your Bible. You, you need to read your Bible. We will never be effective against the kingdom of darkness if we don't put away the religious things and begin to walk in the things of the kingdom, we've got to put away, we've got to put away religiosity. Satan wants to keep us trapped in religion so that we never find out or find our true authority and walk in it. So you can always tell people that don't have a relationship because they have a bunch of rules. They minor, I mean they major on the minor. 
They care more about how you dress than how you act. They want you to zip up, pull down, but their hearts, their hearts are evil. They're full of backbiting and gossiping and the works of the flesh. So we can't let Satan keep us trapped. The power of religion lies in its ability to serve as a substitute for the kingdom. Thus hinders mankind from pursuing the genuine answer to his dilemma. So you have to understand that religion is trying, is man trying to reach up to God. A relationship is understanding that God is right here and we're bringing heaven down to earth. And see, when you have a relationship, you can allow God to use you. You can allow God to, to, to use your mouth, to use your hands, to use your feet, to use your giftings, to use your facilities, to use your faculties, to do his will and to do his work. And you understand the prayer says, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're not waiting for God to come down and do it. God has already told us and called us and saved us to do it. And you shall be witnesses unto me. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power and you shall be witnesses unto me, unto Jerusalem, unto Judea, unto all of Samaria. You will have enough wherewithal. You will have enough power on the inside of you to walk in heavenly places. You will have enough power on the inside of you to influence and dominate this earth. You will have enough power to hear from God because you have a relationship. It's so important to have a relationship so you can hear from God so that you will know which way to go, when to go, how to go, and how long to be there. You've got to have a relationship. Religion is killing the Christians. Christians. Religion preoccupies man until he finds the kingdom. See, he has to, he has to do something that looks spiritual. I, I see people, I see people, and I'm not talking about denomination, but I see individuals, and every Sunday they quote and stuff, every Sunday on TV, because that's what they do. They, they, they quote their doctrine, their apostle creed, whatever it is that they believe in, they quote it. And they try to sound spiritual because they try to emphasize different words and they try to have a certain pitch in their voice and they try to have a smile with it and be pleasant and you already know that their heart is far from it they ain't practicing none of that they just they just have memorized it like a poem it does no good to repeat stuff that you're not going to practice it it, it, it does it, see see you you got to stop trying to uh, 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 impress folk you don't have to impress people what you know and how, especially how spiritual you are. People don't need to know how spiritual you talk. People don't need to know primarily where you go to church and, and your denomination. They need to see Christ in you. I've, I've never had anybody yet to ask me to go to your denomination and pray and ask your denomination to pray for me. They said, I want you to lay hands or I want you to pray and go before the Lord, God Almighty, because they know that we have a relationship with him. And I want you to ask God to talk to, I want you to ask God, talk to God on my behalf. And I believe when you pray that God will move. They didn't ask me about religion. They didn't ask me about uh, 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 rules and regulations and what I believe in and what we do and don't do. They said, I want you to pray for me and they didn't have to wonder if I had a relationship they saw relationship every day in my walk they see relationship every day in your walk when you in trouble who do you call on when you in trouble who do you talk to when you got problems in your life where do you go and where do you spend your time? You don't go read a bunch of laws. You don't go ask a bunch of questions. You get in your word and you get in your prayer closet and you talk to God Almighty. And it's good to be able to hear from him. Religion versus relationship. 
I told you in previous messages, it's not how many scriptures you read a day. It's how many scriptures you apply. And if you're reading it and understanding it right, it takes all day and probably a week or three months to, 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 to be able to apply, understand and apply the one that you know. While you fronting, talking out of both sides of your mouth, talking Jesus when everything is fine and talking doubt and defeat when problems and issues come, you need to make up your mind. Which one is it? You either have faith or fear. You either have a relationship or you have a religion. Religion is what man does until he finds the kingdom. Re religion prepares man to leave earth. The kingdom empowers man to dominate the earth. People who are religious, all they're talking about is going to heaven. Well, everybody ain't dying. I'm sorry. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't mean for that to come out. Everybody is not dying right away. God didn't save us so that we could die. Not physically. He saved us so we could die to ourselves. Die to this flesh. But he saved us so that we could live. And move forward. So that he can use us. Religious forces on, uh, focuses on heaven. Uh, religion focuses on heaven. The kingdom focuses on earth. Religion is reaching up to God. The kingdom is God coming down to man. Isn't that something? See, you understand that religion wants to escape earth. But the kingdom impacts, influences, and changes the earth. We need some change agents in here. We need some folk that know God and have a relationship with God so that wherever you go, you have the answer to problems. Because most folk, most, most, most institutions, most the government, people are in high places and high authority have no answers. They don't have any answers. First of all, they don't believe in the God that give the answers. How you know? How you know? Well, you, you don't know what they believe. I know what they say all the time, and it's not God. They don't have put God anywhere. God is not anywhere. They don't even say Father in the name of Jesus. So Jesus is not But yet they are Christians. Do you understand Christian mean Christ-like? That means you do what Christ did. And not only that, not only that, some people, they, so they say, okay, I understand what Christ like, I, and, I, and, and they understand Jesus, and they can tell the stories of Jesus, and what Jesus did, and how he healed, and how he came and died for our sins, and the things that he did, and the miracles he performed, they understand all that, and they know how to do all that, and they can teach you about all those stories, but they do not step further, and go further to understand, why did Jesus do what he did? Why did he come? He came to put a face on God. He came so that when, 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 when we read the word, he understands, we understand what it is that we need to do because he already showed us. He came to, to show us the relationship that he had with his heavenly father. And he said, since God is our father, we can have likewise relationship. He, he came, he came to put a face on God. That's why the Bible said his name, they call him Emmanuel. That means God with us. I'm getting ready to go into a scripture here pretty soon that says he came that we might have life and have that life more abundantly. That, that's why he came. He came to resurrect a dead situation. He came to get rid of religiosity. He came so that you can feel and touch him and talk to him and understand that you can have a relationship. It's not strange to have a relationship with a God that you can't see. No, it's not. You practice stuff every day that you can't see. You ever see the gas going from your gas tank up through the engine to ignite your engine to start? But yet you get on out there and... <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I must take you to Scripture. We're going to go to John 14, chapter 14, verse 6.
in the Amplified, we want you to understand that religion is not the way. Religion is not the answer. And I'm so glad, you know, God, God led us early, we, and we've been, we have participated in other, in other ministries. And so if anybody wondering what denomination we are, uh, we are non-denomination. None. None. We're not Catholic. We're not Medi uh, uh, Methodist. Okay. We're not Presbyterian, Protestant. And, and, and some, some people say, and I understand in the history book, you know, either one or two, you're either Catholic, Catholicism, or you're Protestant. And under Protestant, all the other religions come up under there. And, but I don't see how non-denomination can get under there, but I guess, you know, that's the way they understand it. But we're non-denomination, which means that we believe in the whole Bible in its total, in, in, in totalness. We believe that the word of God is the infallible, inerrant word of God. We believe that holy men will breathe on by the Holy Ghost as they wrote and God moved through them by the Holy Spirit as they wrote the Bible. We believe that there is no error in this word. We believe that, 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 that God is, is, is the creator of the universe. He's the creator of mankind, the human race. We believe that he made everything. We believe that we are his children. We believe believe in the resurrection after the dead. We believe that there's going to be two, judge, two, two judgments. There's going to be the judgment seat of Christ for the believers and the white throne judgment for those that don't believe. We believe in life after death. We believe that the Holy Spirit of God is in us by way of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is on the inside of us by way of the Holy Ghost. We believe in the Trinity. We believe in the triune God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's what we believe. We believe that the Holy Spirit comes into your life when you give, when you accept Jesus Christ by faith alone, when you do the prayer, when you receive him, and we believe after that, that you can be baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in another tongue as the Spirit of God gives the others. That's what we believe. We believe in laying hands on the sick. We believe in, 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 in recovery. We believe that God is a healer. We believe that God is a provider. We believe that God is a deliverer. We believe that we can ask what we want and God hears us. We believe where two or three are gathered in his name. He's in the midst. We believe. that God is in charge of our life we believe that we have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ and whatever he oh my God that whatever we ask or ask him he hears us we believe it we believe that God can be anything we need him to be we believe that God is I am that I am whatever you need him to be that's what he is that's what he will be We believe that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. That's why we talk to him. That's why we pray to him. That's why we need him. That's why we speak about him. That's why we're excited about him. That's why we worship him. That's why we talk about him. That's why. That's what we believe. Notice in the word, Jesus didn't say that religion is the way. He didn't say what man thought of and wrote up and conjured up and came to agreement on was the way. Jesus said, I am the way. He's the way. He's the one that gets us from earth to glory. He says, I'm the way. I'm the one that directs you. I'm the way, I'm the truth. If you want to know the truth, I'm the truth. Look at me, I'm the truth. Jesus said, I'm the truth. He ain't nothing but the truth. God is not a God that he should lie. He said, I'm the way, the truth. And then I want to digress and kind of, and kind of work with you on this one. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. 
We don't serve a dead God. Religion is dead. Steeped in death. Trained in death. You go to a, a, a I keep wanting to say cemetery. You go to a seminary. And they teach you the ways of man. They teach you how to think like a man, to reason like a man, to solve problems and issues like a man. And all of that is death. So really, in terms, they do go to the cemetery. Because, because, because everything they learn is connected to death. Laws. So what does he say? He said, he, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Guess what he says? No one comes to the Father except through me. Religion say you can get to the Father many ways, and you can leave Christ Jesus out. Religion say I can pick through the Bible and decide what, what, what rules and regulations and what doctrine I want to teach in this denomination, and I can leave the rest out. Religion say I can ignore the really, the, the, I can ignore the true word of God and I can make it up as I go. Y'all think I'm just talking out of my head, don't you? Look around you. You have some denominations right now, they're trying to decide whether to live by the word of God or to make their own rules and regulations. They're having questions about things that, it, that is explicitly clear in the word of God of do's and don'ts in the kingdom of God. They already know, but they, but they skip over that. They skip over that. They're trying to decide whether they want to have a dead church or a relationship. And they have come to the conclusion that they don't want a relationship. They don't want a relationship. You know why? Because they don't want to stop doing the things that, that, that they're doing. Because what they're doing is against God. What they're doing is against the kingdom. They don't want to get rid of their hatred. They don't want to get rid of their systemic racism. They don't want to get rid of any of that. And you don't have to be black or white or red or yellow. You can just, you could be, you could, you could have racism against your own race. They don't want to get rid of any of that. They don't want to change. They don't really want to repent for real. They don't want to repent. They're having meetings and, 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 and they're having to make decisions on whether what kind of leadership they want in the house of God. What you, they, they, they're trying to decide whether they want to, to stand behind same-sex marriages. They're trying to decide if they want to stand behind uh, 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 all of this, this stuff that Romans... Uh, Romans chapter 1 and chapter 2 talk about. You, we got to have a meet. You got to have in the kingdom of God. Now, and here, that's, that's what religion will do for you. You have got to decide whether a pastor, a shepherd of a flock, uh, has the right to be married to somebody else that looks like them and walk like them and talk like them. Same sex marriages in the kingdom of God is not of God. And it's not kingdom, it's religion. And if you, got, if you got to pass laws to decide whether or not you can do that or not, you already off in left field. You already a thief and a robber. Do you understand that, that, that that's outside of Christ Jesus' way of doing things? That's why so many folks are confused today. They are confused to death because they don't know what to do. They see Christians doing the same thing they do. They see Christians voting on whether they should live a homosexual life or a Christian life in the house of God. Who should be up teaching? Those that have holy hands. Those that live righteous. Those that know God. Those that have a relationship with God. Do you not understand that when Jesus Christ come back, he's coming back for a holy people. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle or blemish. He's coming back. You must understand that Jesus said, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll pick up on this next week. Jesus said, I have come 
First of all, he says, the thief, the thief cometh not but to, and we, we would turn that for a minute. Let's see if I can find this right quick. He, he says, the thief, the thief comes not, I think it's 1010. St. John 1010, yeah. St. John, Amplified Bible. St. John 1010. He, he says, he says, he says, and, and we're, going, we're going to go back next week and we'll just deal with all of this. But just, just because our time is moving. The, Jesus said, the, the thief comes only in order to steal, to kill, and to destroy. See, religion comes to steal, if you know anything about Christ and have any type of relationship, a lot of time religion, religiosity comes to steal and take that which you already know away from you. What happens when you take life away from anything? You kill it. And when you're dead, you're destroyed. And that's why you have to watch religion. That's why you have to watch man-made stuff. That's why you have to know the truth. And if God is revealing truth to you, that's what you need to stay with. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter if your world is being rocked right now. Some people, sometimes people will jump ship because right now they're going through a test and a trial and a tribulation. And you start doubting God. Don't ever doubt God. Don't ever trade God in for something else. Don't ever substitute God. You make some people start listening to foolishness. Black Israelites. You lost your mind. Now you're trying to put Jesus in a box. What color was he? The real Jesus is all colors. He's light. All colors are in light. If you go back to your science class. He said, the thief coming only but only to steal and to kill. But he did. He, this, he, this is why he came. He said, I came. Somebody said, I came. Somebody said, Jesus came. He said, I came that they might have life, that they might have and enjoy life. I might have and enjoy life. I can't have and enjoy life with religion. I can have and enjoy life through a relationship with Jesus Christ and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be connected with nothing that's dead. Amen. But you know what they say in the other church, if it's dead, it needs to be buried. Amen. So I'm going to give you some homework. I want you to read in the Amplified Bible, John chapter 10, the whole chapter, because that's what we're going to be teaching on. Because we must understand that religion is not the way. You can dress and talk all you want to. If you don't have a relationship, you're just going through the motion. And we got enough fanfare and theatrics going on in the kingdom of God. And I want to challenge every leader. If you're a leader, if you're a preacher, if you're a minister, if you're a pastor and you're listening to this, or somebody, somebody get it and show it to you, we have an obligation to do what's right and stop messing up lives. We need, we need to stop. Uh, sending mixed signals. Either going to be on the Lord's side or we're going to be on the enemy's side. We can't mix it. We got to tell the truth. And we got to stay in our place and make sure God is in his place in our lives. I'll see you next week. God bless you.